welcome back to my kitchen and cooking with Shay. So today, uh, since we got all of our virtual learning and remote work from home done, in a timely fashion as a special treat, we are going to make some... Cookies? What kind of cookies? Choco chips. Chocolate chips? No, choco chips. I don't think they're going to be just chocolate chip though. We actually have a bar of chocolate in addition to some milk chocolate chips, and I'll talk about that uh, in just a little while. So the first thing about these cookies is all the ingredients, right? We've got a uh, half a pound of butter, two sticks, eight ounces. We've got all-purpose flour, 10 ounces, uh, basically two cups if you're just using a measuring cup at home. We've got three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. We've got a teaspoon of regular old salt. We've also got two teaspoons of vanilla extract. We've got two large eggs. We've got some dark brown sugar. This is about a half cup tightly packed, uh, five ounces for those of you guys who happen to have a baker's scale at home. Uh, additionally, we have some white sugar. We have five ounces as well, but this uh, in a measuring cup is about three quarters of a cup. Um, what makes these cookies really unique is usually when you're making chocolate chip cookies, you have to pick between crunchy or chewy, right? And I'm the kind of guy who wants to have it all, and why can't I? So, what we're gonna do is, rather than just throw this butter in our stand mixer and just cream it with the sugar like a lot of recipes would, we are actually gonna brown this butter, which is gonna give it a really wonderful butterscotchy, nutty flavor, and kind of take these cookies up from a one-step kind of basic chocolate chip cookie to a really next level, kind of best ever chocolate chip cookie. And you've had them before. They, are they a pretty good chocolate chip cookie? I don't know about that, sir. Okay, well, he ate 13 last time we made them out of a batch of 14. So I think the results kind of speak for themselves. So first thing we are gonna do is get to browning that butter. So we've got, got our eight ounces of butter in a saucepan right here. So we're gonna go ahead and light our stove just so it gets melted, we're gonna put it over about medium high heat. We're gonna let that go down. And then once that butter is melted, it's gonna foam. And then once that foam dies out and your kitchen starts to smell really nutty and toasty, that's when you're gonna to wanna to cut it off. So right now we've got the butter foaming a bit. So we're gonna lower the heat and just kinda of let it slowly kinda of caramelize and brown and really get those sugars tasting like butterscotch and toffee and all those wonderful things you think about when you uh, open the door to the oven on a batch of freshly baked cookies. Now that the foam that comes on the top of the butter has melted, you're going to want to watch this really carefully. Uh, giving it a slight gentle stir every once in a while because you want this caramelized but you don't want it burnt. There have been times in which I have taken this reaction a little bit too far uh, however, I just tell people they're vanilla beans, uh, and they think I'm really fancy. However, if you don't want little specks of brown in your cookies, uh, watch this like a hawk. So now we're going to lower the heat on our stovetop, so we don't want this to burn too quickly, and we want to have a lot of control over when this is going to caramelize. So we've got our butter kind of going through a second stage of frothing here, and as you can see, we've got a we've gone from a very pale yellow to almost a golden straw right on the edge of brown. This is where you really, really wanna carefully watch it. Uh, this has been on the stove now for 14 minutes, uh, but I promise you that your patience will be rewarded with the most delicious cookies you've ever had in your life. Once you've gotten the desired color, which is this kind of golden brown look, we are gonna cut the heat. And then we are going to very carefully Take one regular ice cube, and we are gonna rapidly chill this butter down. It is gonna froth a little bit more here. So you wanna whisk it super quick so that the butter doesn't escape out of the pan. And as soon as that ice cube is fully melted and dissolved, and that butter has started to cool down and work its way in, uh, you're gonna transfer this to a non-stick pan that you can chill out in your refrigerator for 45 minutes or what I'm going to do 
for the purposes of the time in this video is I'm going to chill this in an ice water bath and stir really, really rapidly. So when you see this butter again, it will be uh, look a lot more like the butter that we put on the block than it does right now. Now our butter is nice and cooled and it's back to a beautiful, opaque, and slightly firm state. What does opaque mean? Opaque means this kind of cloudy, can't see through it uh, stage. So the first thing we are gonna do is mix together all of our dry ingredients. So we have our flour, and then Shay, if you wanna go ahead and add the salt. Yep, right in there. And the baking soda. That a stir so that everything is nice and combined. Nope, we're gonna do the dry ingredients separate from the wet ingredients, and that's kind of the basis of a lot of baking. That is perfect, buddy. Thank you very much. So, we're gonna move this out of the way for just a moment. Next, we are going to start beating our eggs. So, Shayman, if you. you so I can show you the first one, and then maybe you can do the second one, okay? So we're gonna take our egg. Uh, it's always better to crack an egg on a nice flat surface. Anything with a jagged edge could leave you with pieces of shell in the bowl. I'm gonna do it in a separate bowl before I put it in the stand mixer, just to make sure that we don't get any shell pieces. Kinda like that. So, I will fish that shell out of there. And then Shay, if you wanna do the second one. Very fast. All right, put the shell right on here. I get it. Oh. Nope. You use it better than me. All right, you're good. You're good, buddy. You're good. Yeah, we got it. All right, here. Wipe it on here. No. The beauty of cooking with your children is you never quite know what's gonna happen. Hey, get out of here. All right, and he's back. So the next step is we are gonna take our eggs that we just cracked. Put them in a stand mixer with our whisk attachment. You can go throw those in a garbage for me, bud. And then we are gonna take our sugar, just the white sugar. The brown sugar is gonna come in in the next step. But this is what's called creaming. Uh, and then we are gonna add our vanilla extract, also right into here. Okay. Get our mixer up to the appropriate height. Start it on a nice low speed. Gradually work it higher and higher. After we have whipped our eggs until they are at a slightly stiff peak, we're going to go ahead and add the uh, brown sugar. We're going to switch out our mixer attachment from a whisk style to a paddle mixer. And then we are going to take our butter that has cooled and we are going to incorporate that into here as well. All right, so now that we've got all of our butter in the bowl, uh, we're going to turn our mixer back on. We're going to combine that so we've got a beautiful pale yellow color. And all the butter and sugar is incorporated into our other mix. Next, we're going to add the flour. I'm actually going to stop the mixer and I'm going to add it in thirds just to get it going a little bit. Want to come over here and help me put some more flour in? Flour is combined. Just make sure we get it all off the paddles here. We don't have any super floury spots. The last thing we need to do is stir in the chocolate chips. Shay, you want to yeah. maybe save some for the cookies? Are you sure you owe me one for you? I do owe you a chocolate chip, yes, that is true. So you can go ahead and just 
Go ham. Wait, uh, like all of them? Yep, but the oh, whole yeah. thing. You could also add nuts at this point, uh, caramel pieces, if you had... <laughs> Alright, go eat the rest of those now. Okay. <laughs> you could also use uh, leftover Easter candy. Uh, I tried to use mini Cadbury eggs for this, uh, but I was voted down because apparently some other folks in the house wanted to eat them all. So, the last thing we're going to do, just to add a little bit of depth and complexity, is I have a two ounce Hershey's chocolate bar here that I'm going to roughly chop into pieces. Why are you chopping pieces. it with a knife and not just breaking it in half? So, kind of the way that humans are wired, uh, they really like differences in texture, right? That's why you know, crispy, delicious fried onion rings or, you know, anything like that, like risotto or uh, anything where you've got both smooth and crispy and crunchy, it's going to add an extra layer of kind of depth and complexity to it and take it, you know, a few notches above if we were just making your standard toll house roll that you could buy at the grocery store. So we're going to take all this chocolate because let's be honest, you can't have a chocolate chip cookie with too much chocolate. You can have a piece, God. You're gonna put that in there. We are gonna knock down all our stuff off the side of the bowl. Then we're gonna put our stand mixer just on stir. That has come together very, very nicely. Uh, the recipe we're using today calls for you to chill this dough for 24 hours. And you really wanna let the different flavors kinda develop and get more complex. Uh, and that is great, but I have two very hungry kids who I promised chocolate chip cookies to. So I'm going to go ahead and set my oven to 325 degrees. And we're going to pop these in for between 13 and 15 minutes, just until the edges are golden brown and delicious. All right, so we've got our chilled cookie dough. We've got our sheet pan lined with parchment paper. Uh, a little pro tip, if you get your sheet pan wet, the parchment paper will stick right to it and then that'll evaporate as soon as you put it in the oven and then nothing will be sticking to the pan. So we're going to use a one tablespoon measuring cup and we are going to scoop our balls of cookie right onto the sheet pan. I'm going to do it. Make sure that you leave about. Cookie dough. Uh, no, do not eat the raw cookie dough. It's got eggs in it. But it tastes good. So you want to leave them about a couple inches apart, right? I want to eat raw cookie dough. Definitely don't ever eat raw cookie dough. Seriously, don't, I don't eat raw cookie, cookie dough. Brain got it last time. You can make this recipe without eggs and baking soda and then it's perfectly good to eat raw. Nope, we are gonna save the rest of this dough for another day, because I think that a dozen cookies is absolutely plenty. So there we have it. About 18 minutes later, we have our chewy and crispy, delicious brown butter chocolate chip cookies. Now all that's left to do, excuse me, I made you a plate right Probably here. Probably this one. You can eat that one. What the? Oh no, oh, a cookie bandit.